The city of Barcelona, Spain, Valentine's Day of 1912. Juan Pujol Garcia was born to Joan Pujol, a dye factory owner, and Mercedes Guijaro Garcia, a strict Catholic. He was initially sent to the Valdemia boarding school, 20 miles from his home, but then transferred to a school ran by his father's friend when he was 13. Three years later, he got into an argument with a teacher and decided to drop out and became an apprentice at a hardware store. Juan was drafted into a cavalry regiment in 1931 for six months. He already knew before being drafted that he would be a terrible soldier. He hated horses and lacked the essential qualities of loyalty, generosity, and honor. Juan was managing a chicken farm when the Spanish Civil War started in 1936. The Republican forces accused his sister and mother of being counter-revolutionaries and arrested them. This led to Juan hating communism. He was called up for service by the Republican side, but he refused. He hid in his girlfriend's home until he was captured and was imprisoned for a week. He was then broken out by the traditionalist rebel group Socorro Blanco. He hid with them until they were able to give him fake identification papers showing him to be too old to serve. He then volunteered to lay telegraph wires for the Republican side, with the intention of deserting as soon as possible. At the Battle of the Ebro, he successfully deserted into the Nationalist side. However, he disliked the fascism in the Nationalist side and was imprisoned for sympathizing with the monarchy. His experience with both sides led him to deeply hate both fascism and communism. World War II was the most devastating war in the history of mankind. Around 75 to 85 million people died directly from the war itself. The war officially started with the invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany on the 1st of January 1939, with the Allies declaring war on Germany two days after. So during the early days of World War II, he decided he had to make uh, a contribution for the good of humanity. That was Tom Scott on Juan Pujol Garcia. Tom has a YouTube channel dedicated to educating people on topics they might not have known about. And he went to the British uh, three different times. They turned him down as a spy. So what did he do instead? He certainly helped the British without asking, but not by talking to them. He instead approached the Germans. He created an identity as a fanatically pro-Nazi Spanish government official who could travel to London on business. And he just started sending false reports to the Germans. He would then approach the MI5 as a double agent and got accepted. He had no trouble contacting the German spy agency in Madrid. Juan told the Germans that he was a Spanish politician and that he wanted to become a spy to complete his fascist duty. The Germans accepted him and said, OK, you're a spy now. They gave him equipment. They taught him many espionage techniques, including secret writing. Juan was told to travel to Britain and build up a network of spies and send useful information back to the Germans. They gave him a bit of money and he moved to Lisbon in Portugal. Once in Lisbon, he started to create an entirely fake network of agents. He used books from a local library to make the fake reports look like they have come from London. He wrote these letters in a very patriotic tone. Because he wasn't actually in Great Britain, nor did he speak English, he made some mistakes. One of those included a false remark from one of his fake agents that stated that people from Glasgow would do anything for a liter of wine, despite the fact that Britain did not use metric units, nor was wine very popular in Glasgow. In April 1942, he finally made contact with the British in Lisbon. After he showed them the fake spy network, they finally saw his usefulness and he was sent to London. He was given the code name Garbo, and he was partnered up with Spanish-speaking agent Thomas Tommy Harris. These two men were almost perfect partners. They were both creative geniuses full of ideas. By 1944, the duo had made an entire network of 27 fake agents, each with life stories. The duo wrote 315 letters to the Germans, each averaging 2,000 words. They wanted to overload the German intelligence agency with as much confusing bulk as possible. The Germans received so much fake information from Garbo that they made no further attempts to infiltrate the UK. Now that's a victory royale. Operation Fortitude was the code name for the Allied deception of the 1944 Normandy landings. The Allies used a number of tactics to deceive the Allies into thinking the real invasion would come at the Pass de Cayes, a portion of northern France 
that is the closest to the British Isles, when in fact, it would be arriving in Normandy. Entire fake armies were made, blown up tanks and transports were used in newsreels, the British had made up an entire regiment entirely out of fake soldier and tanks to deceive the Germans. Garbo was decisive in Operation Fortitude's success. His false network of agents based in Lisbon did not try to pretend that there would be no such invasion, for that would be impossible. Instead, he told the Germans that the real invasion would come at the Pass de Cayes. Now, this works for initially bamboozling the Germans, but what happens when the invasion happened? Well, Agent Garbo had another trick up his sleeve. He told the Germans that the strike at Normandy was a diversionary strike and not the real invasion. Because of his credibility as a spy for the Germans, the Germans believed him. Juan was absolutely necessary for the success of Operation Fortitude. Had he not created an entirely false agent network, the Germans would have tried to send actual spies into Britain. If this were to happen, they would find out where the landings were actually be, and so D-Day would have been a lot bloodier. After the D-Day landings, both Germany and Britain gave Juan medals, the Iron Cross and the MBE, respectively. After the Second World War ended, Garbo was understandably concerned that living Nazis would find out about his betrayal to Germany and try to kill him or his family. So, with the help of the MI5, he moved to Angola and faked death by malaria. He then moved to Venezuela and lived the rest of his life in relative anonymity. Juan Pujol Garcia passed away for real on October 10, 1988 in Caracas, Venezuela. Juan Pujol Garcia's work was some of the most important work ever done during the war. Without his carefully coordinated network of fake spies, D-Day would have been so much bloodier or may have been a failure altogether. The Nazis could have won had it not been for him. And so we thank you, Juan Pujol Garcia, Agent Garbo. Mwah.